Good afternoon and welcome to Midday Moms. It's Dorothy Polarski and I welcome each and every one of you signing on. And uh, as you sign on, uh, please do say hello to us in the chat box. Uh, it's always exciting to know that there are actually moms here because when you're doing these Zoom things, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit uh, exciting, you know, I, I miss not seeing you. So, oh, hi, Rosina from St. Benedict's uh, Parish Mothers Group. Great to see you here. Uh, Shannon from upstate New York, um, Amber from Minnesota. Uh, we sometimes, we've got two regular guests now coming from Poland, so I hope you guys pop up. And of course, Lynette from Hawaii, if you're here, make sure you say hello. Uh, Annalisa Athain, our mother's group leader at St. Leo's in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Catherine Lewis, good afternoon from Brampton. Uh, just thank you very much for uh, signing on. And some of you uh, know about our ministries, uh, other if some of you don't. I, I did want to extend a big, 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 big warm welcome to Kendra. <laughs> Uh, Kendra, before I talk a little bit about our ministry, can you just, for the moms that don't know you, now I can't believe that there would be anyone that doesn't know you, but for the moms that don't know you, can you tell us just a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I am uh, from Southern California, uh, and I'm a wife and mother of 10 kids, so we live in, uh, in the uh, greater Los Angeles area now, and Kind of my thing is liturgical living in the home and trying to uh, bring some of those traditions and, and practices that have been uh, observed by Catholics for generations uh, to my family in particular, and then, you know, by extension to everybody else I can get to listen to me. Yeah, and and so you're a you're a, you're you're prolific in Catholic circles, mm -hmm. uh, Kendra. So it was a, a real honor uh, to have you here, and just a big shout out to Ignatius Press, um, thanking them, you know, very much for uh, just making this possible. Because I, I can't imagine how else it would have been possible. Uh, one of our mothers group leaders, uh, Angela Rashid. I don't know if she's here a convert to the Catholic faith. And she's like, I'm so hungry, you know, to learn about liturgical living. And I've got, I'm like, I've got just the book for you. So <laughs> as a part of her mother's group starter kit, we included your book on liturgical living. So uh, you've had a, a dramatic big impact in so many lives. And I, I'm sure that uh, you don't even know the lives you've touched. So thank you. It's a, a real honor to have you here. Uh, Kathy Haynes is here. Hi, Kathy. Uh, she says, I've been following Kendra since her blog days back in 2013. She's been an incredible influence on how I raised my family. And Kathy has been a mother's group leader in our network for, gosh, is it 10 years or 12 years, Kathy? Uh, I can't remember, but uh, great to see, uh, 12, <laughs> there you go. Uh, great to have you here, Kathy. Uh, just uh, love seeing your name pop up. I keep on hoping that maybe one day I'll convince you to be on Midday Moms, Kathy. So uh, maybe now that Kendra has, maybe you'll follow, you know? Anyway, for those of you that are not familiar with our ministry, uh, who are we, why? are we? How did we come to be? Well, we're faith partners with the Archdiocese of Toronto. Uh, we're on a mission to revive the vocation of motherhood, and we do so primarily by helping parishes start Catholic moms groups. We have helped at this point over 50 parishes start Catholic moms groups, and uh, you know, I always say our, I know our blessed mother loves me because she does these kind of remarkable things. And we've recently started a mother's group in the North Pole, which you believe it. <laughs> so, it's so cool. Anyway, um, just a big shout out again to Cardinal Collins, because without Cardinal Collins, without the Archdiocese of Toronto, this just ministry wouldn't exist. And for all of you who have attended our Dynamic Women of Faith conference, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna just show quickly the uh, our ministry video and uh, then we'll just dig right into, um, you know, chatting with Kendra. So uh, I'll be patient with me because I'm not as technologically savvy as I should be, but thank goodness for my kids, come Holy Spirit. 
come Holy Spirit. I'm always thinking, okay, share screen. You're gonna see things probably you shouldn't see, but as I, okay, can you see that screen now there with the, okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I hate showing my inadequacies, but I always say God has a creative ways to keep me humble. So we help parishes start moms groups. And uh, if you'd like to learn more, go to our website. We help parishes start three types of groups, groups for moms only, groups for mothers and tots. And also during this pandemic, we've kind of exploded with virtual meetings so we can help you do that as well. And here's our a very short ministry video to encourage you to learn more about us. Mothers, by our very nature, we are nurturing, loving caregivers. We are social beings made for friendship and community. We are also spiritual by nature, made by a loving God to know him and love him and to pass this love of our Catholic faith on to our children. But right now, many mothers feel overextended, distracted, and exhausted. Though as Catholics, we have the community of our church, many mothers attending Mass could not name the moms sitting next to them in the pew they share. Community and support among Catholic mothers is desperately needed in this hectic and chaotic culture your parish needs you to bring these moms together. Hi, my name is Dorothy Polarski. I'm the founder of Catholic Moms Group. We at Catholic Moms Group are on a mission to revive the vocation of motherhood. We exist to bring together like-minded, faith-filled mothers who crave community and are focused on spiritual growth, Catholic teaching, and fellowship. Can you imagine a thriving, engaged mother's group at your parish? A group of moms in love with their Catholic faith, ready to serve other mothers no matter what stage of motherhood they're at. Can you imagine what a difference that would make at your parish? Starting a mother's group, it's not rocket science, but working with a team who's done it before and who's done it dozens and dozens of times sure does help. The Catholic Moms Group membership site is an online community that offers training, resources, and dozens of tools for parishes to help them start a mother's group quickly and efficiently. We're here to provide you with a clear path to launching a Catholic Moms Group at your parish. All of our materials are 100% Catholic. We have clearly laid out meetup plans for both moms groups and toddler groups. We are obedient to the magisterium of the Catholic Church. We have created dozens of tools that are going to save you time and energy. And besides that, we love our Blessed Mother. We constantly turn to her for her intercession. You can make a huge impact in your parish, so join us. We are revolutionizing the way parishes start mothers groups by providing parishes with a Catholic mothers group starter kit and by nourishing and training a community of Catholic mothers group leaders across the world. It's time to start a mothers group at your parish. Join us today. For the real reason we're here, um, Kendra, a, a big warm welcome. Just for those of you that may have missed uh, her introduction, Kendra Tierney is a wife, a mother of 10 children from newborn to teenager. She's an enthusiastic amateur experimenter in the domestic arts. She writes an award-winning blog, Catholic All Year. She is a regular contributor to Blessed Is She Ministries and is the voice of liturgical living at Endow Ministries. She is the author of 
the Catholic All Year Compendium and a little book about confession for children. What an honor to have her here now for a little while <laughs> with Catholic Moms Group uh, from, you know, Toronto, Canada. So <laughs> a big warm welcome. So, so Kendra, you've got 10 children, you've written all of these, you know, remarkable books, you have an award winning blog. Can you give us a few of your secret tips to being such a prolific and, uh, you know, remarkable mom? Well, I would say that it, it wasn't something that I was able to manage the this uh, the side hustle stuff that you know as I like to call it until I had big kids. Um, you, you know, I was uh, I was just treading water there for a little bit, like like everybody with with a bunch of little kids. But um, but as uh, as our oldest kids got got older, it really you know it it, it has become a a family endeavor and they're able to help with the little kids and we're sort of all in it together and that gives me some time to work on to work on other stuff and bring these ideas that that you know I've workshopped in my own family to you know, to more people so it's a uh, very very inspiring for you know for, for all of us um what inspired you uh, what was your first book the Catholic all year sort of the book was that that was that your first book or was there one before? Uh, the, the first one was um, a little book about confession for for children which I wrote uh, after I complained to my spiritual director when I was preparing my oldest son for his first com confession I said you know I can't find a book I like on on confession for kids uh, you know, everything was either too complicated or too dumbed down. I wanted something, you know, right in the middle. And uh, and he said, well, then you should write one. It's like, what? I can't do that. Um, so don't complain to your spiritual director. Um, but yeah, so that was the first one. And then I started the blog because uh, at, at that point, when I, when I wrote this first book and Ignatius Press accepted it, uh, they said, well, what's, you know, what kind of a, a platform do you have? said, I don't have a platform at all. I, uh, we send out a Christmas card. I have a Christmas card list. <laughs> that's, that's my platform. Uh, so then I started the blog. I, that's when I got on social media. I wasn't even on Facebook on my own. Um, this was in you know 2013. And so I started the blog in order to have a platform for when my book came out um, and just ended up writing about these uh, these Saints Day traditions that that have been so fun in in our family, and then that turned into the second book, the Catholic All Year Compendium, which uh, which covers about a hundred feast days and the different liturgical seasons, uh, it, with just sort of activities and songs and um, you know ideas for foods and a little bit of a history about the feast day. And then my new book that just came out, uh, the Catholic All Year Prayer Companion, yeah, that one goes along with they can they can be used separately, but um, it it, uh, it fleshes out the suggestions that I make in the compendium for you know I'll, I'll say here's the scripture verse that you sh that uh, that you might want to use in your prayer time or with your family. Here's a prayer. Here's a novena that is associated with with the day, and so now those are all compiled in one book. So um, uh, so it's an easy sort of grab and go resource. Yeah, it's uh, it's fantastic. I was I was you know looking through it, and I was you know a little bit. This is the beauty of the Catholic faith. I was a little bit stunned that uh, that there's and, and I shouldn't be stunned. I may be showing how little I know, but um, that Saint Agatha actually is the patron saint of um, uh, breast cancer, and that Saint Agatha endured many tortures for her Christian faith including having her breasts cut off. She was then sent to prison where St. Peter the Apostle appeared to her and healed her wounds. She is the patron saint of people suffering from uh, breast cancer and of nurses. And I was just like, whoa. And, and, and so then, you know, the, the, the prayer was there uh, as well. And, and, and so I, I want to encourage each and every one of you that are here today to, to pick up the book, because not only is it a, a, you know, a prayer book organized in 
liturgical order, but there are a lot, lot, just a lot of facts in there. I was kind of secretly looking for St. Jane Francis de Chantel, whose feast day we celebrate today. Yes, it's today, but uh, there are so many saints. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, there are, there are. And so yeah, I, yeah, they're not all included. It's about a hundred, it's about a hundred saints. So. Yeah, and, and I, I went, and instead, of course, I went to your uh, Instagram and, uh, you know, picked up the quote, which is, which was fantastic. The, the other thing, Kendra, I've got about a hundred questions to ask you and I don't, I know I don't have, you know, a hundred hours, um, but yesterday, I think it was yesterday, you celebrated your 20th wedding anniversary. Is that correct? Yes. Yesterday on the feast of uh, St. Clair's, our 20th anniversary. And, and something that you wrote inspired, you know, so many women on your Instagram account and it, you know, inspired me too. And I'm hoping that you can inspire the moms that have joined us. Um, you know, you said something to the effect of, you know, so many people complain about marriage and you said, uh, I can't complain about it at all. It's been a breeze. I'm so grateful to be married to my husband and I love this beautiful vocation. And you could just see all the comments on your Instagram account. Can you just tell us a little bit, you know, about your marriage, about your husband and why you think your marriage is such a breeze compared to, you know, the rest of humanity? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do, I think that, that you hear that so much that, that marriage is hard. And for people who are in a difficult marriage and persevering, that is, that is a beautiful thing. But you know, my personal experience of marriage is that it, it has been easy. My, you know, I, I, I think I picked a really good one and uh, he, he and I are just, we're really compatible and he's a really good man. And, um, and, and so I haven't had that experience of, of marriage being really difficult. Um, we have gone through difficult things as a family. Um, my husband has stage four melanoma. He has a uh, lung and, and brain tumors. He's occasionally had seizures because of them. Um, you know, we've had uh, our, one of our son, our, our, uh, at the time, two-year-old son was hospitalized for many weeks with bacterial uh, meningitis. And so, I mean, it, it's not like there have been no bumps in the road, but, um, but I, I feel like that we're we're just compatible in a in a way and and that you know that that our relationship is we have the grace of a sacramental marriage which i think helps a lot and uh um and that we are both striving to um to grow in personal holiness and um and i think that helps too but uh he's he's a really good man and and i haven't ever felt that that marriage was really you know, a struggle in the way that I hear that other people uh, do. And so I, I certainly feel like that's, um, that's a gift and, and I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, no, so thank you. And I, I hope I, well, I, I hope I didn't sort of catch you off guard, but it was just so beautiful. When I saw that Instagram post, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I guess the, the other thing that this is Holy Spirit driven popping into my head. We didn't really prepare <laughs> for some of these questions. So um, I guess anyone that would kind of, you know, see you from the outside in this, you know, beautiful woman with these beautiful uh, children with this incredible, uh, you know, husband. And, and, and I had a guilty pleasure. I, 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 I do have to admit, I, I was fascinated by the blog post about your house a number of years back, right? And it would be easy to look at your family and you from the outside and, oh, well, they've never suffered. They just have this glorious, beautiful, perfect life in California. And, and, and yet just now I've, I've learned that, you know, there has been suffering um, and there is suffering. And, and can you tell me a little bit about how you navigate it in such a graceful way that you're, you know, still very productive, prolific, you know, you're obviously not feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, beauty radiates even, you know, during our, our interview. Um, for those moms maybe that are, 
suffering right now, um, is there anything that you might say to encourage them or to, you know, sometimes I say smack them upside the head, you know? <laughs> Uh, and I mean that in a loving way, because like sometimes, you know, my own daughter will say to me, mom, what are you complaining about it? You've got it so great, like snap out of it, right? Uh, so yeah, any thoughts? Yeah, I don't, uh, I, I don't know, you know, exactly how to address that. And I do, uh, I have, you know, heard the criticism from some people, or and not even necessarily criticism, but just I've had people say to me, you know, I can't follow you on Instagram because it bums me out. And, <laughs> and that's okay. That's, that's okay. Um, I, I would say that, that some of it is just a, a temperament issue. And some of it is, you, you know, just that, that kind of stiff upper lip and put your best foot forward and don't air dirty laundry kind of thing. That's just sort of how uh, I am naturally inclined to be. So I want to present the beauty and I want to present the good parts. Um, and that doesn't mean that, that there aren't also, you know, challenges that, that I don't have messy counters like everybody else. I, I definitely do. Um, uh, but, um, I, I mean, I think, and, and that's kind of that's sort of a big part of my personal apostolate with my, with my community is, you know, we have people over, and, you know, my house is, is as clean as it happens to be on that day. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll try to tidy it up for you, but this is how we live. We live here. And, and so, you know, I don't have that expectation that my home is going to be perfect when people come over. Um, but I don't know. I, I think that, um, that I, I don't know if it's just a, a grace, but, I, but um, you know, my, my dad has always been a, has always been a really positive person. And, um, I, and I feel like I get that from him and, and that, that there is just, there is a grace in, in that, that comes from being willing to radically accept God's will for your life. And, it, you know, for better or, or for worse, I, I know that, that my life from the outside looks, um, looks pretty cushy to, to other people. And, and it feels pretty cushy to me, but, um, but that's the life that that uh, those are the cards I was dealt, and so I, I am, you know, trying to focus on radical acceptance of of God's will for my life, and when you know, be that, you know, spending weeks in the hospital with a you know with a newborn, and my uh, and my you know two year old who then had to you know he had to learn to walk again. He um, and I mean it was it was really. Um, it was really something, but again, we, we, I'm so grateful we came out of it and, and he's running around in the yard right now. Um, and then facing the unknown with my husband is, is a challenge, but, and I think that the unknown part of it is the biggest challenge of it all, because like everyone, you know, none of us knows when, when our time will be up. Um, it feels a little more, um, you know, it, it feels a little more accelerated with, with what my husband is facing, but, but we never know, you know, they could come up with a new treatment tomorrow and he could, you know, we could live a, a, a very long life together or, you know, things could take a turn at any moment. And I think that just having that trust that I don't know how it would be okay, but it, it, it will be it, somehow it will be. And I, I just, I, I just trust in, in that way. And, and I, I want to, again, thank you for how gracefully you're handling my sometimes pointed questions. I don't know where they come from when they come. So uh, just thank you. And uh, I, I apologize if I'm being too off the cuff, uh, but it's the Polarski way, you know. Um, I, let, let's get back a little bit more, you know, to the book. Can you tell us a little bit about how um, the Catholic all year prayer uh, companion. How did that come to be? How did it come to be? <clears throat> yeah, so um, when I wrote the Catholic All Year Compendium, which I've got that here, I will show it to you. So this was uh, the first liturgical living book, the Catholic All Year Compendium. And like I said, that, so that's all the seasons of the year, about 100 feast days. And it's just sort of ways that I have researched and discovered or come up with little ways that, that we observe those days in our home. And it's through recipes, it's through 
um, sometimes activities, things like that. And um, and so uh, let's. I did an I did an interview with with a, who's a guy who's also a friend, the, the Catholic woodworker. He he makes beautiful wooden products and rosaries. And um, he said, well, that, that this is the book for moms, and and that this is the book for dads. And and it's funny. I did. I really didn't think about that when I was putting it together. But it actually is how we use it in our home. That that the Catholic All Year Compendium is really sort of the way that I serve my family through food and activities, and and you know as a homeschool mom, also through you know teaching uh, about you know the the stories behind the feast days, and then the the prayer companion really is when we come together as a family for what I, I call our apostolate of the dinner table, that, that that's really a priority in our family is, is spent, you know, having that dinner time all together. And the prayer companion is, is really when my husband takes over and he's able to sort of lead our domestic church and, and my kids can see him praying. They can see his practice of the faith. Um, and all he has to do is grab this book, open it up to the day. Um, so there's prayers for specific feast days. There's prayers for each month's uh, traditional devotion. There's prayers for seasons. And then there's also just daily prayers. So there's um, things in there for the way that we observe, the, the way that we remember, um, you know, baptismal anniversaries, our kids' name day saints. Um, so it's just all there. And, uh, and, and it it really is a way to sort of empower and enable um, my husband to be um, the leader of our domestic church. So, you know, thank you for for that. And and, and if people, if moms want to purchase um, either the Prayer Companion or your first book or the book on confession, where's the best place to do that? So the books are available um, from my website, catholicallyear.com. Um, they are also available uh, at Ignatius Press and, you know, all the, the big bookstores like Barnes and Noble and Amazon also carry them. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Um, now, do you have a few more minutes? Because I want to be, do you have a few? Yeah, sure, yeah I have a couple more minutes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, no, it depends on what you come up with, Dorothy. <laughs> there might be a disconnect. Um, I just, I, I wanted to, you know, just do a shout out to all the moms that are watching. Uh, I always say, if you've enjoyed or you're enjoying this conversation with Kendra, if you're enjoying Midday Moms, if, if, you're, if it's bearing some fruit and inspiring you in any way, um, please make sure to you know, buy Kendra's book. <laughs> please make sure to tell people about Midday Moms. Um, you know, I, I, whenever I hosted my own mother's group in person, uh, I, I used to always say, and I still say, if you attend mom's group or you attend a podcast and nothing changes between now and the next time we meet, then kind of you wasted your time and my time. I was like, oh, Dorothy, how dare you say that? But the whole idea is, is you know, it's not like spiritual gluttony where we just get all the, Ooh, it feels good. But the, the whole idea is that there's some type of movement forward. And I, I am going to challenge you, each and every one of you, and ask you today, um, that the very least, can someone in the chat box please make a commitment that they will pray a full rosary for Kendra's intentions today? Can anyone do that in the chat box? I'm like, come on, girls. <laughs> this isn't just about. No, I, I think it's extremely important that you know we take from from inspiration to, to some form of action. Um, Kendra, can you tell us just a little bit uh, about uh, some of your maybe spiritual disciplines or spiritual practices that might encourage moms to grow in their faith? Well, too, I'm, I'm going to jump. I, I will do that. But before that, I do. I, I want to put a plug in for what you're doing um, that that motherhood was meant to be done in community. And I, you know, I, I tell people all the time that that this isolated, stuck at home all day with only little kids, uh, you know, all, all the household tasks falling on you, that, that that is not the way that that motherhood has has been practiced historically you know, throughout time and all over the world, we've always been able to, 
um, we've we've always had the you know the example and the help of of other of other families and you know extended family and and, and friends, and I can see it you know even just in my immediate family as my big kids have have gotten old enough to to have a meaningful impact on on our home and, and the you know the responsibilities and especially now you know that they can help with the driving. I mean, it's just a whole different world than when it was me and four little kids hanging off of me and I have to decide whether I bring the groceries in and leave the screaming baby in the car or whether I just decide that I'll start over on the groceries later. You know, I, I mean, it just, it's, it's just so much. And, and it made a huge difference in my life when, uh, when I joined a Catholic mom's group and I was able to, to have that example of what does living a faithful Catholic life look like? How is that different than what I'm seeing on TV? That 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 what I'm seeing, you know, in 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 secular families, and you you can't know what it's like if you haven't ever seen it. And um, it just gave it was so empowering to me to to meet other families with older kids and with big families because I had never seen that. I grew up with one sister. Um, and you know, here I am with ten kids. So to 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 meet other families, and you know, to have our husbands have friends who are are Catholic dads, and our kids to have friends who you know, hopefully have values that are aligned with our own. It, it's it's so important. Yeah, and I I, I just have to I guess I I grew up in a I, I was born in Poland and to and I came to Canada as an immigrant family and I was only two years old and, you know, lucky me, I was born on the feast of, uh, on the same day as uh, St. John Paul II and, you know, sent him a birthday card and he responded and anyways, but oh. yeah, no, very cool, very cool. <laughs> but what uh, happened to me, like I, I was heavily involved in the corporate sector and, um, you know, delivered seminars um, internationally and you know, customer service, success skills for women, and all that kind of stuff. But there was always like this kind of dynamic tension in me. You know, is what my mother taught me like this devotional, religious Polish mother, and you know, father that ate kibasa and were more devotional Catholics maybe than they were, you know, cerebral and academic. Like, are they right? And you know, and just like anyone else, I had. Uh, you know, I kind of wonder, just like my own adult children right now, like, you know, this crazy Polish mother that's interviewing people from her kitchen table <laughs> about religion, like, is this the real thing? Or is what the world taught me, you know, the real thing? And, and it was once I met another woman that I could relate to, that prayed the rosary or another woman that was, you know, hipster, like, it was like someone like you, I go, okay, yeah, right. And I'll never forget when I heard Kimberly Hahn speak because my husband proposed to me at the Franciscan University at the Defending the Faith Conference. And it was like, holy Moses, like I never met Catholic like these, you know? And so my own mother's group, you know, kind of loved me in a way that my own mother couldn't because again, she was Polish, devotional, dogmatic, but she, you know, if I asked her questions, she'd be like, heretic, heretic you know, <laughs> but still, you know, a very good woman. And so, um, you know, having that encounter with another woman that you can relate to um, that is a practicing Catholic, it has been such a remark. Like I always say mother's groups, Catholic mother's groups are the best kept secret in the world, really. Um, you know, when my own mother died, it's just like, boom, they were all there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're just loving me and supporting me. And, and, and we're now planning my daughter's wedding on September the 17th, oh, Feast of St. Yeah, St. Hildegard Vingener. <laughs> She's getting married on Friday. <laughs> anyway. Um, let me let me get back to well, and I'll, I'll answer the the question that you actually asked which is you know i know that that for moms and you know even as i'm saying how much more time i have it's still time that it's still hard to find time to pray in the way that 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 we all know that we should and i would say that that the the one thing that's most meaningful to me is to say the morning offering in the morning 
I have a whole you know, plan of life that I intend to get to in any given day, but no matter how far off the rails everything goes, if I have said the morning offering, the first thing when I woke up, then I know that, my, that I have dedicated my, my day and everything that I do as a prayer. So if that's the only thing that I get to all day, that's a pretty good thing. To, to be able to, to know that, that I have started my day with a morning offering. And, you know, as soon as I wake up, that's, that's the first thing I, uh, you know, I, I do is, you know, before I even get all the way out of bed, I, I say the morning offering. And then, you know, I say it again in the car with the kids. If I'm driving them to school, I say it again with my homeschool kids um, when we start our school day. But, you know, I just want to make sure I got to it. And then, of course, there are other things that I want to try to get to during the day. But that really is to me, the, you know, the, the, the bare minimum, which is, uh, which, which is still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, and if someone's able to do a little bit more than the bare minimum, what else might you recommend? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, things that are sort of based on time of day work, work better. Um, so I, uh, you know, we, we try to get to, to daily mass a couple extra times in the week. Um, and then uh, I, uh, I, I like to have an alarm on my phone that goes off at noon to remind me of uh, the Angelus. Um, and then in the evening, um, I, we try to do a uh, you know, family, family prayer, uh, but uh, like sort of a, a family check-in, especially with the big kids. And then just the act of, con the, uh, act of contrition, usually the Our Father also with the little kids um, you know, before we're going to bed so that we can think about know how our day went and what we could do to improve for tomorrow so those are the ones that I try to get to and then we um for our for the rosary we we tend to do that when we are stuck in the car so mm -hmm. if we're out running errands if we're um, driving places my kids know you know if we buckle into the car we grab the rosary out of the cup holder and um that's been the most consistent way to get to it for our family so uh, I, I just wanted to uh, just touch base with everyone in our chat. We've got quite a few people offering a rosary for you today. So you. <laughs> we've got, let me just see here. We've got Carmela Pietrobone. She's offering a rosary for you today. Kathy Haynes has been following you a very long time. 10 years, 12 years, Mother's Group leader is offering uh, a rosary for you. Catherine Lewis is offering a rosary. Amber is offering a rosary. Maria D'Souza, Claude, um, I'm going to be offering a rosary for you. So uh, please you. know that uh, you will be sending lots and lots of prayers your way. Um, I, and again, I just wanted to take a moment like, to thank you for, for being an inspiration to so many women uh, across the globe. And uh, I'm going to pray for you specifically, uh, just in dealing with, sometimes I think, you know, anger and jealousy of, of other women. You know, I've had women say to me, Dorothy, I'm jealous of you. I'm like, okay, well, it's your problem. <laughs> no, and so uh, I, I want to pray specifically for, for, for you for that. And, um, and for those of you that have joined us today, you know how much I love receiving emails uh, from you, just hearing from you, letting, letting me know that yes, the ministry is doing something right. And yes, I enjoyed the talk with Kendra. I always say, you know, testimonials are kind of like my daily vitamin. So if you feel inspired to write to Dorothy Polarski or, you know, info at catholicmomsgroup.com, um, I love getting those emails, and uh, if there's one that particularly touches me, who knows, I might send you a copy of the book. So please, uh, yeah, woo -woo. I love doing surprise giveaways, So, uh, but I'm not going to give it away easy, so it's got to be a pretty good, uh, it's got to be a pretty good thing. So anyway, I don't want to, uh, you know, take any more of your time. I, I know that I've probably taken more than uh, you were you know, you were expecting, but uh, a, a big and warm thank you uh, for joining us today, Kendra, and uh, a big and warm thank you to all of you that have joined us today. 
this Saturday, um, August the 14th, the Feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, and on September the 8th, our Blessed Mother's birthday, um, I'm hosting a two hour workshop that gives you like the speedo version of uh, what our ministry offers. So if you're interested in that, visit our website, catholicmomsgroup.com and register for it. Remember, uh, follow us on Instagram. I always say it's three words, easy to remember, Catholic Moms Group. And remember to uh, follow Kendra, get her book, and please pray for um, my daughter and her husband as they prepare to get married. And please pray for me, the wife of, not the wife, the, the mother of the bride. Uh, any closing thoughts, Kendra, before we sign off? Oh, well, that's all. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me and thank you for your prayers. And uh, yeah, I'm so grateful. Yeah, so I always like to end with a little bit of a song. I'm so glad we had this time together just to have a laugh and pray a prayer. Seems we just get started and before you know it comes a time we have to stay so long. I know everyone's busy. Thanks for signing on. Uh, hope you come back and remember to spread the word about Kendra's work about Catholic Moms Group and about Midday Moms. We need you, we're here for you. And mwah, mwah, mwah. bye Kendra. Bye, thank you. Bye. Goodbye everybody, bye-bye. <laughs>